Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be a Ritual Beast deck for the post-Extreme Force February 2018 format time frame of the game, essentially. Now, this is a deck that I really like. I haven't done a lot of testing with Ritual Beast specifically in the, you know, past couple of weeks, but I've done a little bit off and on, so I do have at least a, you know, deck profile to show you guys, because a lot of you know that I really like this deck, and it's been very heavily requested on the channel for me to do an updated Ritual Beast deck, because, again, you guys know that I really like this archetype, I really like the deck, I really like how it plays, specifically in the aspect of it rewards you very heavily the more you know about the deck, a lot more so than I feel other decks and other archetypes and other strategies do. I feel like the learning curve for this deck is incredibly, like, just lopsided compared to, like, how you could start playing the deck and how you could end up playing the deck after you master all the different uh, aspects of how the deck plays. Uh, but basically, this is a list I've been testing, like I said, off and on, so I figured that it was decent enough for me to share with you guys. It might be something that I might play at a regional or something uh, in the coming, you know, months or so. Uh, all things considered, though, it definitely wouldn't be my first choice because the deck does still have some inherent problems that haven't been solved yet, although the Link Monster does make things a bit better for the deck. But anyway, uh, starting off the 40-card list is uh, three copies of Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. You really need this guy to, like, just start your plays. Uh, so, like, the people that play, like, less than three, I don't understand how you could get away with doing something like that and considering that you're good with the deck because you need to put two monsters on the field, and this is the only main deck Ritual Beast card that does that uh, without, like, soaking up your special summon effects. I, I don't quite understand, but anyway. Uh, two copies of Win, uh, just because it's, like, one of the best follow-up summons. Uh, and then two copies of Zephyr and Pilica because I am playing the field spell package in this deck because I felt like it gave the deck a little bit more of a consistency boost than other options. Uh, one copy of Ritual Beast Tamer Laura to just be another card that summons from Grave. It's another name. It's basically just another Pilica essentially. Um, it's got a little bit bigger of a defense stat, so that's good. And it also isn't a pendulum, so you can put it on the board, and if it gets destroyed, it doesn't go to the extra deck and get trapped there like Pilica can. Uh, but, like, it's it's got a little bit, like, less utility. But basically, these cards are, like, fine to draw. That's why there's so many in multiples. Uh, because they're fine to draw because if you open with a combo uh, that allows you to make the Link Monster, these cards are truly the MVP whenever you're doing any of the Link combo plays. Uh, and if you just hard draw them, you were going to search them in the combos anyway, most likely. And so if you just hard draw them, that lets you search a different Ritual Beast card instead. So these are fine playing at multiples. I don't think I'd ever play two Laura, though. The only reason there's two Pilicas is because I don't want Oracles to be uh, to be dead, essentially. But two copies of a Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. Uh, this card is obviously a Spiritual Beast and a Ritual Beast Tamer. So, like, that's very good. Uh, usually, old builds used to play one of this card, but this card has actually really changed the dynamic of how this deck can play. Uh, specifically like in sided games because of how it can interact with like evenly matched and stuff like that um, How like you can just like have this die uh, Your opponent can't really beat you over your fusion monster You can tag that out and then chain evenly matched in the end of the battle phase but You can go into battle phase tag out uh, your your fusion and then evenly matched So like that's a thing for side decking games if you're if you're trying to take this deck seriously uh, But otherwise like this card really just changes a lot and uh, you used to play one of this because it was kind of bricky But now in all of like the new combos you're trying to end with like two of these in your banish zone so you can tag out during your opponent's draw phase for two of these uh, because it's, a, it's like just a great floater. Like your opponent has to clear this and then deal with steeds that you've searched and then possible ambushes and stuff like that. So it's just a fantastic card uh, and two of it is kind of necessary for the combos like I just said. Uh, but for the beasts, three Conahawk and uh, three Rampangu, you definitely kind of have to max out on three of each of these. Uh, this deck's problem is that, like, the deck's best hands are two monsters that work well together, uh, like Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu, or, like, Win Gold Sark, or, like, just things like that. Like, you want to be opening with a Beast and a Tamer, and you want to be able to summon those. So, like, you need cards, you need two specific cards that, like, work together, and extras are fine, typically, because they usually contribute to something. Uh, but it's the same sort of problem that Invoked currently has, where, like, you have nine uh, Alistairs, so, like, in theory, the deck is incredibly consistent at getting to Alistair, but when you have multiple Alistairs, they're dead, and that's sort of the same thing that this deck has a problem with, of, like, you have to draw either one monster, being Conahawk and Pangu, uh, and then you can, like, just play on traps with those, or you have to open two monsters that are, like, playable with each other, like Elder plus one of these guys, but if you open multiple monsters, like, way past, like, you know, two monsters, like, if you open, like, four or five monsters, your hands aren't really that optimal, because, like, you've, you're playing all these monsters so that you can draw, like, a healthy combination of them, 
but unfortunately, like, that can also just contribute to your brick hands. It's a problem that Ritual Beasts has always had, unfortunately, and it's not really something that's easily solvable, as far as I'm aware, but... Uh, one copy of Spiritual Beast of Paleo, going back to what I just talked about, like, this is normally a two of, but I found that, like, in most game states, I was usually just getting away with just playing the one. Uh, so I feel like just playing the one is fine, because that does help slim down on numbers and help keep it to where, like, you're not drawing multiples of cards that actually don't do anything turn one. Uh, like I said, Conahawk and Penguin are kind of fine by themselves. Like, you can just summon Conahawk and, like, set... If, you, if your opening hand is Conahawk plus four traps, that's fine. If your opening hand is Rampangu plus four traps, that's less fine, but it's still fine. Uh, Conahawk specifically, just because it's like a, it's an advantage engine by itself, albeit a very slow one. And Rampangu can like start setting up your cards in Grave for like your Pilika, Laura plays or whatever for a follow-up turn. And both of these cards also play very well with like if one of those cards was Ambush. If you open Conahawk or Rampangu plus an Ambush, and this is your only monster, then you're able to use Conahawk to banish a Tamer. Or Rampangu to banish a uh, a Kimun Falcos and send us uh, send a Tamer from your deck to grave, and then when these die, uh, they'll be in the grave and you can ambush them back out at the end of your opponent's turn and then start playing on turn three. So those are kind of fine, but I wanted to like slim down on the cards that don't really do anything like that. And unfortunately, you can't really get away with playing less Tamers. Uh, the only one you could probably cut to one is like Win, but Elder's too important. Uh, you kind of have to play one Laura for the name. You have to play two Pilika if you're playing the field spell to make the rest of the deck more uh, consistent. Uh, so, like, this was just the only number I found that I could slim down on, and then I just cut Petalfin entirely. Like, the card is not very good, and it's not needed for a name because Winda replaces it as a name. So there's technically four Beast names and four Tamer names. There's technically five Tamer names because Pilika is also a Tamer, but you're always summoning it as a Beast. Like, you've got four Tamers... Winda and then three beast names. Uh, if you if you understand what I'm talking about with like my reasoning uh, for like uh, like the ratios and stuff, like I put an obscene amount of like theory and number crafting into this deck. Uh, like this is one of my favorite decks to actually just build because it is a numbers game. Just like World Chalice is one of my favorite decks to solitaire combos with because those are numbers games. Like it's all equations, it's all formulas. But anyway. The rest of the monsters are hand traps, uh, two, uh, three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, and then two Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Uh, Ash isn't really that great right now, but like there are decks in the format, like 60 card decks and like stuff like that, that just do a lot more unfair things off one card. And those cards are like things like Grass or stuff like that. Um, and the Pendulum decks right now that are like doing like more consistently well are playing Pendulum Call, and Ash is like really good against that card. Not really good against the rest of the Pendulum deck in general, but I mean, it is a card that at least can do something. Ogre is just better overall against uh, against Pendulum Magicians because like you just hit their Electromite and like that's really good. Uh, basically, like these are just obviously concessions for like going first and second. They're not bad going first because if you're able to open like even with like a hand of Conahawk plus a couple of traps plus one of these cards, that's fine uh, because like these are still defensive cards. But going second, these cards are uh, also just really good for you to try and let you play the game. Like this deck struggles a lot uh, trying to play the game going second unless you like open ideal card combinations like because you're you're not going to play through a pendulum board with three negates on it unless you open like torrential strike but that outs every board in existence so like there's not much that you can't really like bank on that like being in every opening hand going second but anyway for the spells that was um by the way that was uh 22 monsters if i remember correctly uh but spells uh oracle's effort brain research lab and one terraforming to be the second copy of both uh, this way you can open, like, any two, uh, and, like, that's perfect because you can just terraforming for Oracle, get Zephyr and Pilica, and then Brain Research Lab to get an additional normal summon. Brain Research Lab is great uh, because it makes your hands more consistently playable, specifically because of Winda being both a spiritual beast and a tamer. Obviously, like, you still want to have hands that, like, contain Conahawk and contain Rampangu because those are what get you extra cards into the mix to start doing your combos, uh, but still, like... These cards are all, like, really just very good and very needed for the deck because, like, uh, like, this doesn't really, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a card that I would play by itself, alright? I wouldn't just play, like, two Brain Research Lab and call it a day in this deck. At least, as of right now, I don't think that I would. So, like, I wouldn't just play two of this, so I've got to play something that gives, like, the, the engine a bit more utility. Um, and like Oracle Zephyr searches Pilica, which we've already established is very good in all of your Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu plays, because that means that instead of searching it mid combo, you already had it in hand, so you can search a different card, like an additional Steeds or an additional Ambush, so an additional defensive line. Uh, so like these cards, 
they both increase the scope of your play, but they also contribute to the problem that the deck has. Well, specifically this card, because like, like I said, your problematic hands are going to be the ones that are really monster heavy, and specifically hands that are monster heavy that don't include like good beasts or ways to summon them. Like if your hand is like a bunch of pillicas and a bunch of winds uh, and a bunch of elders, like you're not going to be doing anything with that. So this doesn't really help that problem. Uh, but, like, it is still just, like, a really good card to play because it essentially means that with Terraforming and Brain Research Lab, um, if I was just playing two Brain Research Lab, you could still introduce a problem into the deck by drawing both of them. Whereas, like, if you only play one, one, and one, if you draw any two, one just becomes a monster, and then that monster is immediately able to be double summoned by Ra Brain Research Lab. So, it's all theory. Like I said, it's all numbers. It's all a game. The game before the game even starts, but... Continuing into the spells, one dimensional fissure, uh, and two copies of Gold Sark. Those are the only spells in my deck. I'm not playing Rageki. I'm not playing Foolish, although Foolish was a card I was testing for a while. I'm not playing E Telly because it seems just strictly worse than Gold Sark. Because again, uh, E Telly is just one of those cards that it doesn't really do anything but it doesn't really unbrick your hands of like multiple tamers because E Telly just gets a tamer and it can't even get Winda, so it can't even get a spiritual beast. If Winda was a level three, E Telly would be a lot better for this deck because then you'd be able to E Telly out Winda. That's a tamer or a beast, right? But E Telly is a card that I've been very back and forth on. It doesn't really contribute to your good hands that much. Uh, it does assist them, yes, um, and it is obviously basically like pretty good when your hand is like e Telly plus Conahawk plus uh, like some defensive cards. But like if your hand was Conahawk plus a bunch of like three defensive cards, your hand was probably good enough anyway to where the e Telly didn't matter. It just allows you to play a bit more on your turn and get like one extra defensive card, which is good in its own right, but most of the situations that it had, it just wasn't very good. Uh, that's the problem. And like Gold Sark is actually like basically just a better like extender for that sort of porp sort of porp uh blah, blah. i can't speak i'm saying sort of porpoise no for the sort of purpose uh gold sark is sort of a better extender uh foolish even though it works with six cards in the deck essentially or not six uh five yeah two pelico one laura the oracle and terraforming um it's just it's a card with too much variance um and usually you're not really you know having trouble getting things into the grave for like laura or pelica anymore because of the fact that we do have the link monster uh, but, like, Gold Sark is a starter card with win, uh, and Gold Sark extends all of your combos very nicely. So, like, if you drew e Telly with, like, Elder Conahawk, that doesn't really contribute to your combo quite nearly as much as Gold Sark does. Because Gold Sark searches more names than just summoning a Tamer out of your deck and soaking up its special summon. Uh, it leads to sort of wonky board presence where the Gold Sark doesn't, like, change the numbers on your field. Uh, so you're able to just do other stuff. Like, there's there's a lot of reasons why I'm playing Gold Sark and no Foolish and no e Telly. Uh, but those cards are something that is consistently on the testing table uh, for uh, for me to be playing. But anyway, for traps, three copies of Ritual Beast Steeds and only two copies of Ambush. I was noticing that I was breaking on this card a lot because, um, like, this card is basically, like, you want this card whenever you're playing the game. Um, and while it can be used with Conahawk and Rampangu, as I previously stated, to, like, sort of salvage your way out of bad hands... You ended up with a lot more bad hands because of this card being at 3, but I definitely didn't want to cut it to 1, right? Uh, I definitely didn't want my ambush to be a 1 and done type deal. Like, this deck gets very grindy, plays through grindy uh, uh, boards because of the, the nature of how Steeds operates. Um, and the fact that this deck also has hand traps and other traps in it. So I definitely didn't want Ritual Beast Ambush to be something I can only do once. Uh, so that's why there's 2 here, but... It was something that, like, you only really want to see this card when you're playing the game. And if you were playing the game, you could search this card anyway. Uh, multiple steeds you don't really care about if you draw, because, like, if your hand is capable of summoning one monster, congratulations. Steeds is a card that outs one monster on your opponent's side of the field now. Uh, so, like, this card doesn't really brick you, because you can just summon a monster, set steeds, and set whatever other back row you have. Ambush was the card that you had to open when you were playing the game already, so that's why I cut it to two. Um, it was also for like space reasons. I was just looking for a card to slice, uh, and it just came to the I just came to the conclusion that ambush just wasn't that amazing to warrant at three because while it does like sometimes salvage bad hands, the hands that it doesn't salvage were much more numerous. Uh, but anyway, continuing on, three torrential tribute. This card is fantastic. I'm so glad this card came back to three. Uh, this card is fantastic for this deck because the trick you do is you summon your fusion or your link monster turn one, like if you're doing your Conahawk play or whatever, and so your opponent summons their monster or they commit to their board, 
And so they're not going to play into Torrential usually because you have monsters on field and like they don't really think about the play you could do because Ritual Beast is also an old outdated deck. And so then you just, when they summon a monster that you, uh, when you want to Torrential them, when they summon their monster, you go Chain Link 1, the Fusion or the Link Monsters effect to tag itself out. It shuffles itself back into the extra deck as cost. So it clears your field. And then you go Chain Link 2, Torrential. And that blows up your entire uh, opponent's board. And then on Chain Link 1, your, uh, your Fusion Monster or your Link that you put back will then summon those two monsters back. So you get to get the monster off your board as cost, Torrential your opponent, and then after the Torrential resolves, your monsters come back. And that's fantastic. This card's also just very, uh, very powerful because I'm also playing Triple Solemn Strike and uh, Solemn Judgment. Specifically with Strike, though, like the Pendulum boards uh, that are being generated this format, they auto-lose to, like, set Torrential, set Strike, set a monster. Uh, or you could even summon a monster and, like, set Steeds uh, to make them have to try and commit more into getting out of it. Even if you don't even have Steeds, I'd probably still summon the monster uh, because, like, it's going to put them on thinking they have to put enough damage on board to play around Steeds. Uh, but so then like you can just hit, they'll have to commit more to their board and then you just hit them with torrential and then anything they use to negate like Naruto vortex or whatever you just hit it with strike the entire board goes away um, and usually the pendulum decks can't really recover from that because uh, especially the ones that are like uh, the ones that are like crazy combo heavy um, most people just play that deck wrong and they don't end up with a lot of resources left over and even the more standard pendulum decks uh, usually aren't able to do a lot either because they're still only penduluming one from the extra deck usually because their Metaltron is gone and they don't play a lot of links. You're either playing against a regular pendulum deck that doesn't play against a lot of links so it doesn't open up a lot of extra deck uh, special summon access or you're playing against the turbo build that summons a lot of cards from the extra deck and does a lot of that but then they've like they've got very few resources left in the extra deck so it's a win-win just regardless of which matchup it is. But so that was a 40 card main deck. Uh, for the extra deck, the one copy of Ulti Conahawk, uh, three copies of Ulti Apelio, one copy of Ulti Petalfin, and only one copy of uh, Ulti Guy Apelio. You don't need more than one of this now because of uh, Kimun Falcos existing. Uh, but then, speaking of, three copies of Ulti Kimun Falcos because this is your go to thing to banish off of uh, Rampangu, and also you just want to keep summoning it. Uh, I do not have them, even though they are rares, because I have not gotten a single card from Extreme Force yet. <laughs> That's a lie. I own one Mythical Beast Basilisk. <laughs> Those are the cards I own from Extreme Force. Um, everything else, I just haven't I haven't done anything with. I, I don't go to locals often enough to own this card, uh, but I will probably just like purchase a set of them at some point. But I just have the proxies from when I was doing the original combo tutorials, so I was like, well, might as well, right? Uh, the only other Link Monster I play is Decode Talker. Uh, this card kind of comes up in certain matchups uh, where you can link like the Kimon Falcos and uh, and just another monster that's taking up space on your board away into Decode Talker and just like go for game with it, play around uh, play around certain cards with it like Time Pendulum Graph. It comes up occasionally, but not a lot, but it is still worth the spot. That is the only other Link Monster I play. Then for Xyz, play Utopia the Lightning and Utopia, Diamond Dyer, Lightning Chidori, and Abyss Dweller. Literally none of these cards matter. Uh, this card doesn't matter, this card doesn't matter, the Utopias don't really matter, the Deco Talker rarely matters. Literally, your entire extra deck is just like these ten cards. The Lightning Chidori, and then all of the Ritual Beast monsters, because like, this is what you make every single game. These cards are all flexible, you could just make them whatever you want. Like, you could play Cowboy, you could play the Rank 2 for if you open Double Elder, you could play the like Rank 3, like, Levier if you wanted to, to go like Pilica Pilica or Win Win. Uh, into something, or like Pilica win into something. Um, not really ideal, uh, but it's definitely like options. Like this deck, this extra deck is very flexible. You could even do something like uh, like find room for scapegoat in the main deck and then just play like a few more link monsters uh, so that like you could actually use scapegoat as like a good card as well in this deck because this deck falls under the same philosophy of like if you play scapegoat, like you can just extend your boards a lot, like making just a boar load or making like evening gear suit or something it's pretty powerful but anyway that is the list uh let me know what you guys think in the comments down below as always let me know what you think about the cards that i discussed about like how i'm still testing those um if you have any decent testing with those uh let me know what your opinions on them are and stuff like that but like i said this is the list i've been testing off and on um it's basically been doing well enough i feel like the field spell engine is warranted in the deck because like i said it does contribute a little bit to the deck's overall problems of like just drawing multiple monsters, uh, but specifically multiple tamers. But at the same time, Brain Research Lab also inherently counters that uh, if you have any beast in your hand to like combo with. So there's a lot of different things. Like I said, this this deck is very much a numbers format deck. Like it's very much a deck that 
you win your games in the deck building phase because if you know enough about this deck to pilot it perfectly um, and you're playing steady, you should win a lot of matchups specifically because of how absurd a card Steeds is. You've got a lot of traps in your deck. You've got so much disruption that even like just sticking one monster that you're able to poke with turn after turn and you're playing your cards correctly, your opponent isn't going to be able to do a lot to you. But this deck does have a huge problem in the deck building uh, phase of like you want enough monsters to open two of them but a lot of the monsters you have to play to facilitate that are tamers, which are bad in multiples. There's a lot of things like that that I discuss in this video. But anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. As I've already said, this video got a bit long because I explained a bit too much, but I think you guys enjoy that anyway because I'm very in-depth with my deck to, uh, profiles and stuff. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description if you want to connect with me, chat with me on other platforms like Twitch or Facebook, stuff like that. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. And so now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that's supporting in the lower tiers. You guys are forever awesome for the support that you give. You help make things on this channel possible, and I cannot express the amount of appreciation I have for you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support.